Good morning. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about some lifelines and uh, hit some main points and hopefully close with leaving some impression on what this group can do to ensure that we have resilient lifeline systems, which creates a resilient community. So um, that's just my title slide. Uh, not very many slides and they're not going. There they are. Okay, so lifeline systems, let's, let's go over what they are. Lifeline systems are, are mobility and utility systems that we use all the time. The word services is underlined. So it's called lifeline infrastructure systems, but it's all about the services. It starts and ends with the services. All of you use some form of these services already. This conference does not exist without these services. You would not have gotten here. You would have not flushed your toilet. You would not take your drink of water or your coffee or your, or your tea without these services. Okay, so let, let's keep that in mind. So what is resilience? What are we talking about? We're talking about resilience to hazards. So we need to understand the basic concept of resilience. Everybody has their own ideas of what it is, and that's fair. But resilience that I'm talking about is how do we maintain the provision of these services, or if we lose them, rapidly restore them after a hazard strikes. We've heard about hazards already this morning. This is actually, I had a good lead in from the infrastructure panel earlier today. They, a number of them talked about different hazards, hazards related to climate change, the earthquake. I am an earthquake engineer. So it's interesting to see the uh, correlation with extra computing power. But, but we're talking about resilience to hazards. We're talking about rapidly restoring services. What does that mean? Rapidly means something different to every one of you. What we're really talking about is how rapid should these services be restored if they're lost? Everybody's not equal. I would pose that a hospital needs to get these services restored more rapidly than almost anything, but definitely more than a sports complex. Right, we can all agree on that. So it gives you an idea of, of what does rapidly mean. It's relative. Not everybody's equal, not every customer is equal here. And it's also a function and relative to the size of the event. You know, if we're talking about earthquakes, a large widespread earthquake, it's a much bigger deal than a small magnitude four that might shake just a little bit and maybe not even cause, cause damage. So we're worried about the scale of the event, the size of the urban environment, the vulnerability of the infrastructure, all of these come into play when resilience. Resilience is a very complicated notion. This is a diagram from the Infrastructure Resilience Division on uh, a framework for asset uh, assessment, management, and governance. It just kind of gives you an idea of how complicated things can be. So it starts with identifying your hazards, the type of infrastructure or infrastructure systems, and understanding the, uh, the event cycle. So that's what that one is in, uh, in the corner. How do you assess it? How does it affect the community? How do you govern and management? Uh, manage the infrastructure systems? I'm not gonna go through the whole thing. I just wanna go through uh, and show you a few examples of how this moves forward. So you start with understanding your system, the hazards that it affects it, and how it works through the environment or the uh, event cycle. But then with the, knowing the fragility, you can understand how the system can function after an event. So think of a major earthquake, we're in Los Angeles. Things can get damaged. So you damage the infrastructure, but that leads to how do you provide service? How does the system operate? A system can operate when damaged. But when you do lose services, you need to think about how do the services get to the people and the organizations when they can't come through the network? It's a damaged network. They still need services. Well, that'd be an example of using bottled water if the water system were damaged. And that affects the environment, that affects the community, that affects the economy, the society. Now if we think about how do we design those, you kind of go the other way. You need to think about what are your performance goals? That starts with uh, societal needs, right? So what services do we need for the society during a disaster? And when do you need them? 
We can go without service for a certain period of time, but how long is long enough, right? The timing issue that I brought forward. So if we set some goals on what the society should have, that establishes the needs of the services and when they need to be restored, which then establishes the functional requirements of the system, which then we can design. We design back to the performance that we set over here for the society. So we can design a system, system-wide, some vision, the huge networks that we just talked about er earlier today. How do we design the system to provide the services that society needs during a disaster, right? Major event, it, it implies that we can't prevent damage. We cannot prevent damage, it's too large, too complex. But we can set and design for performance level. And we design each component so that the system can perform the way it needs to. And that leads to the main point for this audience. It's performance-based design. What we need is this group of people to establish better improved methodologies for geotechnical hazards using performance-based design. This is really essential to get to the bottom point to create resilient lifeline infrastructure systems. If we don't have performance-based design methodologies, for example, identifying the likelihood of ground displacement at different locations around your system consistently, right? This, this allows us to design across hazards, across the system, all components in a consistent way. Some methods exist, they need improvement, and they're not well established into the uh, practice. But this is my closing slide. This is my request. This is what we need to do if we want resilient life, lifeline systems. So thank you for your time.